Today, let's look into a place in northwestern Utah known as Skinwalker Ranch. In recent past, it was also known as Sherman Ranch. It is located on approximately 512 acres southeast of Ballard, Utah. This area is reservation to the Unital and Oray tribes. UFO reports in the Unital Basin were publicized during the 1970s. Claims about the ranch first appeared in 1996 in the Salt Lake City, Utah Desert News, and later in the alternative weekly Las Vegas Mercury, as a series of articles by investigative journalist George Knapp. These early stories detailed the claims of a family that allegedly experienced inexplainable and frightening events after they purchased and occupied the property. This family eventually left the ranch and never returned. Later, it was purchased by Robert Bigelow, who then enlisted the government to aid in solving the mysteries of Skinwalker Ranch. They recorded many anomalies, or so it's rumored, but kept all the data as hush as they could. Of course, that's no surprise when dealing with any government entity. The most recent owner, Brandon Fugel, has embarked on a quest with a team of researchers, including an astrophysicist from the University of Utah, to solve the mysteries that engulf this ranch in the Unital Basin. So, we will look at information today pertaining to different legends, as well as information given by researchers from the area. This information is easily found since they have made this into a show, which of course is dramatized, I'm sure, for entertainment purposes. What we will do is take the information and look deeper using our APM eyes to attempt to give some alternative ideas, theories, and facts about data we have been given and see how we can correlate it with APM research and Earth technology. So Skinwalker Ranch, its name is taken from the Skinwalker of Navajo legends concerning vengeful shamans. In Navajo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. The term is never used for healers. As legend and Navajo belief goes, animals associated with witchcraft usually include tricksters such as the coyote. However, it may include other creatures, usually those associated with death or bad omens. They might also possess living animals or people and walk around in their bodies. Skinwalkers can be male or female. Any data that backs up any of this legend would be the cattle mutilation that has occurred on the ranch for de several decades. However, the manner of a lot of deaths seem quite deliberate and clean to be animal attacks. Eyes removed with precision and circular patterns and female organs removed seems to tell the tale of purposeful removal in my opinion. The researchers brought some exotic alpacas to the ranch and they were attacked. The bites and tears in their skin seems they were simply attacked by an animal, which happens often when animals of soft nature are left alone in pastures. Now, the last cow that died does indeed seem a bit suspicious because it just seemed to drop over for no apparent reason at all. And at the same time, the entire herd moved as far away from the subject as possible. The team called a vet to check out the cow, and he said the animal became stressed and an immediate death followed due to pneumonia. So, we can look into radiation for a cause. However, no radioactive readings were picked up from the cow or the area when the team arrived. Doses of a thousand Geigers would cause almost immediate death within an hour, but it would also be able to be picked up on by the Geiger counter. Now, there are other particles that can cause great harm when directly impacted by them, such as alpha particles. 
Alpha particles pose no direct or external radiation threat. However, they can pose a serious health issue if ingested or inhaled. This is just one theory that may have caused pneumonia and death. Also, beta particles, which are more penetrating than alpha particles, but are less damaging to living tissue and DNA because of the ionizations they produce, are more widely spaced. They travel further in air than alpha particles, but can be stopped by a layer of clothing or by a thin layer of substance such as aluminum. Some beta particles are capable of penetrating the skin and causing damage such as skin burns. However, as with alpha emitters, beta emitters are most hazardous when they are inhaled or swallowed. This is another theory due to the pneumonia, as with the alpha particles and the cow was, wearing, was not wearing anything to protect it. However, no burns were found, so inhalation would have to be the route if this were the culprit. Next, we have gamma rays. They are a radiation hazard for the entire body. They can easily penetrate barriers that can stop alpha and beta particles, such as skin and clothing. Gamma rays have so much penetrating power that several inches of dense material like lead or even a few feet of concrete may be required to stop them. Gamma rays can pass completely through the human body as they pass through. They can cause ionizations that damage tissue and DNA. Again, with the tissue damage being the cause of death in the lungs, this could be a reason of death. Let's take a look at this older clip and show you guys where these particles would come from. Triboelectric charging from fragmentation of rocks near the vent and within the plume of a volcano during eruption offers another mechanism for electrical charging. A study in the journal Science indicated that electrical charges are generated when rock fragments ash and ice particles in a volcanic plume collide and produce static charges, just as ice particles collide in regular thunderstorms. Volcanic eruptions are sometimes accompanied by flashes of lightning. However, this lightning does not descend from the storm clouds in the sky. It is generated within the ash cloud spewing from the volcano in a process called charge separation. So what's charge separation? It is the process of an electron in the atom being excited to a higher energy level by the absorption of a photon and then leaving the atom to a nearby electron acceptor. This is what happens at the CERN facility, specifically relative to the reaction plane in PV PV collisions in the Alice reactor. With different plumes studied when they started going downwind, it seemed to have a life of its own and produced some 300 lightning bolts. The implication was that it had produced more charge than it started with. A study performed in 2010 found that the water content of volcanic plumes is much greater than the water content of thunderstorms. The study also found that there may be a needed amount of concentration required in a plume for lightning to occur. Naturally occurring radioisotopes within in ejected rock particles may cause self-charging of volcanic plumes. So what are radioisotopes? They're any of several species of the same chemical element with different masses whose nuclei are unstable and dissipate excess energy by spontaneously emitting radiation in the form of alpha, beta, and gamma rays. During an eruption, a large amount of fragmented subsurface rock is ejected into the atmosphere. 
Let's compare this area one more time and compare it with CERN. As we can see, all the pieces fit. So comparing it to this last little clip I just showed you, we have Wawa Springs, which is an old monster vo volcano that erupted a while ago. But as we can see, compared to CERN, Wawa Springs is very similar to the Alice part of the accelerator. What we're seeing here is our Earth technology. See, so, so this is also the same process that would take place at any of these sites that we speak of where these angels may reside. The technology below is what's creating all of this. And last, we can look at neutrinos, which, as we have learned recently, are very much all around, and the labs we learned about are studying these deep underground. So this last possibility of the cow's death due to their hazard only threatens life when close to and during the initial blast. They are very penetrating to flesh and would cause interaction with the tissue and cause damage, as seen with the cow lungs. So can neutrinos be detected? Neutrinos have mass but no electrical charge. Because of this, they cannot directly produce ionization in a detector and therefore cannot be directly detected. This means that neutron detectors must rely upon a conversion process where an incident neutrino interacts with a nucleus to produce a secondary charged particle. The neutrinos could be the cause and would not have any detection unless specifically looking for them using conversion. Science says neutrinos would put an imprint on the sky and universe. If you know APM work, then you know the universe is much more local and the effects that we see in the sky are a result of the universe below. Hidden ancient neutrinos may shape patterns of galaxies. Please keep in mind as we look at this information that we are, what we are seeing above is very local and also below. Subatomic particles born in the universe's first, second may imprint their effects on the sky as we can see here. We are seeing a halo lattice. Also, there are these occurrences called KVOM, also known as false streak holes, and several other names were given trying to describe this occurrence. If it looks familiar, it's because we have seen this before in the Channel 1111 code and his halo find. as well as the Skinwalker Ranch sightings. As we have shown in the past, this electromagnetic energy will help shape the clouds to and around the energy. Next, let's turn to Google Earth and find some correlation why this area of North America may be such a strong location to have the effects Skinwalker Ranch has been afflicted with. First thing that we're going to look at are accelerators. So Skinwalker Ranch is right along the path of two accelerators that are in the area that are running 578 miles apart. Now we know that the accelerators can actually run around 800 miles and that's just what we're aware of from what we learned in the past videos.
Not only that, but Skinwalker Ranch is also along the line of several accelerators leading all the way down to Mexico. This would give us what's known as a ley line. So being on the globe is going to kind of mess it up. Skinwalker Ranch is also around the center point of two underground labs. These are about a thousand miles apart. So these labs are very known for neutrino activity. Next, we'll add in the three super volcanoes of North America. Again, Skinwalker Ranch is a central location. We also know that the lava produced in these three super volcanoes can cause a magnetic flow. Mixed amongst these are several other volcanoes and ancient volcanoes along with the Utah salt flats. Salt being a crystalline material can also carry any flow or magnetics along specific paths. Next, we'll take a look at the rainbows around the area because as we know, this is electromagnetic showing through. So I've grouped them into three different seems like groups of rainbows in different areas and also grouped all of them together so what this is looking like is an accelerator and possibly the nodes around it so when we look at all this together if it was just one thing then it may not mean a whole lot but when we look at it all together and we see all of these different correlations it seems to show a big picture that Skinwalker Ranch is a central location to several realm systems when you take all of this information and also look at the Wawa Springs connection we have a very good picture of our technology below and the earth energy that it's creating. EMFs have been recorded above and below the ground. Let's take a look at this animation I made to show why they are getting readings above and below. These halos will do just that. Their experiment was centered around an area called the Triangle, and they wanted to get up a mile high to obtain EMF readings. Unexpected to them, they came into some problems during their ascent. They followed a spiral path upward, starting wide and moving inward as they ascended. Seeing the animation can help us understand why their helicopter was detecting something in proximity several times while they climbed in height since magnetic proximity meters can indeed detect electromagnetics within proximity of the aircraft. In theory, a radar could be adapted to image certain magnetic fields by sensing any change in the polarization angle of the radar waves. Oh, look at that. The highly conductive black material we obtained last week, about 100 feet below the triangle area, where we've also seen a bunch of weird things, including UFOs, was located right where a recent magnetometry survey revealed a huge anomaly. Well, that same survey showed another similar feature right here beneath Homestead 2. We want to know if there could be some kind of connection between the high strangeness we've seen at both of these sites. So Eric and I have devised an experiment to actually measure the conductivity. 
where we're going to use the well pipe and a conductor grounding rod separated by about 50 or 60 feet. And we're gonna connect those to a wire through a multimeter that will measure voltage and current, and then that to a 12 volt car battery. Now, the key here is that the circuit is open. The only thing connecting them is dirt. We got that end connected to the ground wire, and that end is connected to the well. So if the dirt is highly conductive, then current should flow out of the battery, through our measuring device, through the wire, to the copper rod, through the dirt, up through the well, back through the wire, and back to the battery. If that's the case, that'll tell us how conductive the dirt is. If we do measure a lot of conductivity in the soil out here, do you think that would explain some of the crazy feelings people have, some of the instrumentation going haywire, stuff like that? Maybe, but here's the thing that's missing, the battery. Right. We'd have to figure out where the battery's coming from. Yeah, we don't know what would energize that phenomenon. There's still a power source somewhere that we hadn't figured out, but we're hoping this will help us maybe get to that. I've wondered for a long time whether there might be some kind of underground energy source or some ancient Earth civilization may have used the area as a power storage. Are we ready to do this? I say we are. Is that the other end hooked up? Yep. All right, Eric, hook right. it up. Let's go. There, look at that. Oh, wow. Wow, significant. That's almost a, a third of an amp. Wow. I was not expecting that. I was expecting it to be barely one little digit move. 0.3 amps is flowing through 50, 60 feet of soil here underneath us at Skinwalker Ranch at Homestead 2. I've never seen anything like that. There should be nothing. It should be billions, maybe even trillions of an amp. It's like we have a, a transmission line, like a power line, running underground, but everywhere underground. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean? It means if there's a power source or something stimulates it, then electrical current is flowing all everywhere under the ground, and everywhere electric current flows, a magnetic field is created. All right. Seeing how big that current is makes me think I might be able to power a flashlight off. Oh, yeah. That's you have one? Idea. So I've got one back here in the, in the nice. uh, Pelican case. It should be pretty easy to test this out. So I wanna, what I want to do is break so, out right there. What we're doing. Well, that was interesting. So that's connected directly so, to Yeah, that. this just beeped because you just disconnect the power. It was this. Wait, what? That just went off? Yeah, just as you disconnected that, this, this you electrostatic. You set off the lightning meter. Yeah, now that's interesting. That is very interesting. When we took the battery out of the circuit, the lightning detector would go off. I don't think I have a good understanding of why that happened. Do it again. Wow. That you're conducted, you're conducting energy up through the ground as trigger that somehow is triggering that thing. What? We, that's repeatable. Look at that. These researchers have dismissed the ether as part of the components that are causing the effects to begin with. Without the ether, the anode, and the cathode, not a lot would be taking effect. We need to recognize this on a large scale in different areas of the world. Skinwalker Ranch just being one piece of many areas that run on a very large system that the effects can be seen and recorded regularly. Finally, let's leave this presentation on a beautiful note by looking at some of the rainbows I mapped earlier and see how glorious they truly are. Don't forget that we are collecting rainbow footage for Operation Rainbow Warrior. So if you see any, try capturing video and keep looking because likely they will be repeatable in the same general area.
Hopefully this has been as enlightening to you as it has been for me by studying the area with APMIs. If you have any more information regarding Skinwalker Ranch, please leave me some comments below. Thanks for tuning in to this APM decode of another weird location of our world.